Let's get right into it. Number 6. The Salt Addiction Legacy Your brain absolutely loves salt, but not just because it tastes good. For most of history, sodium was incredibly scarce. Early human diets heavy on foraged plants and lean game provided barely enough sodium to maintain essential nerve and muscle function. Salt was, quite literally, life. Your body needed it so badly that it evolved a powerful, reflexive, and almost irresistible craving for the taste of sodium, a survival mechanism designed to make you cross an entire continent just for a lick of a salt lick. This strong, historical genetic programming became a biological time bomb when human history introduced civilization, trade, and eventually, mass-produced preserved foods. Suddenly, salt wasn't a rare treasure. It was a cheap way to preserve meat and make bland grains palatable. Now, we are drowning in sodium, consuming multiples of what our bodies actually need, yet our ancient, panicky survival mechanism is still firing off in our brains every time we pass a bag of chips. That craving isn't a modern preference. It's a desperate, outdated alarm system honed over millennia of scarcity. The historical availability of salt has dramatically shortened the lifespans of modern humans by contributing to high blood pressure, proving that some of the most effective historical survival traits can become the most dangerous liabilities in a world of abundance. Number 5. The Cooking Brain Boom If you're wondering why your brain is currently capable of understanding this complex chain of sarcasm, you can thank fire. Specifically, you can thank the day some early hominid figured out that sticking a piece of tough, raw meat or a tuber into a fire made it taste better, easier to chew, and, crucially, easier to digest. This simple historical moment the invention of cooking was arguably the single most important dietary change that literally rewrote our biology. Raw food requires an insane amount of energy and time for your body to break down and extract calories. Try spending 8 hours a day chewing tough roots and raw muscle. You'd need a massive gut and gigantic jaw muscles, much like our primate cousins. Once you introduce cooking, you've essentially outsourced a huge chunk of the digestive process to the fire. Heat denatures, proteins, and gelatinizes starches, which means your body gets to absorb the same amount of calories in a fraction of the time and with minimal effort. This caloric surplus was a game changer. It freed up massive amounts of energy that were previously tied up in maintaining a huge digestive system, allowing that energy to be diverted to the most metabolically expensive organ in the body, the brain. Our brains, these massive, power-hungry supercomputers that burn about a fifth of your daily calories, couldn't have evolved without someone inventing a skillet, or at least heating up a rock. You owe your intelligence, your language, and your ability to watch YouTube videos to a perfectly cooked steak. Number 4. The Rise of Dairy Tolerance you might think drinking a glass of milk is the most standard, unexciting thing a human can do, right? Wrong. For the vast majority of human history, doing that would have led to a day trip to the digestive discomfort zone. We are, biologically, not designed to consume another mammal's mammary secretions past infancy. Your prehistoric self's small intestine would have looked at that lactose molecule and screamed, Intruder alert! The inability to properly digest lactose lactose intolerance is actually the default setting for a human adult. So what happened? We invented agriculture, and then, the world's slowest, weirdest biological superpower competition. Somewhere around 7,500 years ago in Central Europe, a tiny genetic mutation popped up that let some humans keep producing the enzyme lactase, the thing that breaks down milk sugar well into adulthood. This wasn't just a quirky new party trick. It was a survival cheat code. In times of famine or drought, if you could stomach a cow's output, you had a readily available, nutrient-dense food source that others literally couldn't touch. These milk drinkers survived and had more milk-drinking kids, giving them a massive evolutionary advantage. The result? That single, tiny, genetic spelling error spread like wildfire across northern Europe and parts of Africa where cattle herding was big. So, if you can pour milk over your cereal this morning without instantly regretting every life choice, you're basically a genetic mutant, a walking, breathing testament to one of the biggest, strangest, and most delicious historical moments that literally rewrote the human digestive tract. Your body is a trophy for the domestication of cows. Number 3. The Small Skull Shrink If you look at the average human skull from, say, 10,000 years ago, and compare it to yours, 
you might notice a startling difference. Theirs was bigger. Specifically, their brain volume was larger. Now don't panic. This doesn't mean your ancestors were necessarily smarter than you. In fact, there's a great deal of debate on the implications, but the trend is real and disturbing. Over the last few millennia, the human brain and, consequently, the container for the brain has gotten consistently smaller. The major historical moment driving this? The invention of agriculture and the rise of dense, complex societies. Before agriculture, you were a hunter-gatherer. Your survival relied on constant, high-stakes spatial awareness, vast environmental memory, and intense collaboration with a small, intimate group. Every day was an intellectual and physical marathon. Once we settled down, domesticated animals, and built cities, the immediate, intense, cognitive demands of survival shifted. We outsourced problem-solving to collective knowledge. Domesticated plants became less diverse and potentially less nutritious. And the need for raw, brute cognitive processing to navigate a wilderness decreased. Our brains, which are incredibly expensive organs to run, may have simply downsized to be more efficient, less dense, and more specialized for social living. You are essentially carrying around the light version of a brain that was once designed to take down a mammoth. Number 2. The Agriculture Jaw Shrink You might love your soft, processed foods, but your teeth and jaw absolutely hate them. When humans transitioned from a hunter-gatherer diet full of tough, fibrous plants, raw meat, and hard nuts to an agricultural one based on soft-cooked grains and porridges, we initiated a slow-motion biological disaster for our faces. Chewing hard food for hours every day stimulates the growth of your jawbone. The historical shift to soft food, which requires minimal chewing effort, led to a reduction in jaw size over the generations. But here's the rub. The size of your teeth is genetically coded and did not shrink at the same rate as your jaw. The result? A massive evolutionary mismatch where adult mouths are too small to comfortably fit all the adult teeth. This historical moment is why orthodontists exist. Most of the tooth crowding, misalignment, and impacted wisdom teeth that plague modern humans are not an accident of nature. They are a direct, biological consequence of the last 10,000 years of culinary history. Your perfectly straight smile is an artificial correction for a problem we created the moment we boiled the first pot of mushy porridge. Number 1. The Water-Saving Kidney Mutation Picture yourself crossing an arid, unforgiving plain. Water is the most precious resource and your survival hinges on your body's ability to conserve every drop. For this exact reason, a certain genetic mutation in a gene called ABCC11 became incredibly successful in certain East Asian populations thousands of years ago. This mutation affects the density of sweat glands and also changes the consistency of earwax, a fascinating side effect we won't dwell on. But crucially, it led to a more efficient kidney that was superb at retaining water and salt. In the historical, harsh, dry conditions of early human migration, this was a massive survival advantage. The people with the water-saver kidney survived the droughts and had children. Fast forward to the modern, abundant world where clean water is just a tap away. Suddenly, that hyper-efficient, water-retaining kidney is a liability. It's too good at its job, holding on to salt and fluids when it doesn't need to, making individuals carrying this historical trait potentially more susceptible to certain types of kidney stones and hypertension in a world of high-sodium diets. Your body's brilliant historical adaptation to scarcity is now an inconvenience of modern medical history. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.